Hello, Carlos. Welcome. But anyways, uh, can, we, uh, can we show the slides, please, to go over that case? So today is not Thursday, it's Friday, my fault, next case. And I would like to make an announce announcement about a discovery. Uh, I'm going to talk about an old species uh, who showed a phenomenal adaptation to a new environment. Next. Uh, uh, this species is called Rarum Germanum Workaholicum. And uh, this guy was caught lazing on a Sunday evening next in Moscow. So this was a very rare species next. But somehow next, uh, two second-handed researchers put him back on track. And that's why you guys are having this excellent meeting in Frankfurt. So with that, we can move forward. Next one. So this is the second case here. Uh, it's a 35-year-old male weighing uh, 83 kilos, not 73. Uh, he had shortness of breath and exercise. He also has systemic hypertension and type 2, di I, I, I'm, I'm sorry, type 1 diabe diabetes recently uh, diagnosed. Uh, he has the classical findings, physical findings of ASD next. The ECG uh, showed uh, RV age and sinus rhythm. The TTE showed RV dilatation, uh, very uh, conspicuous, uh, and a large secundum ASD. Next. So these were uh, the pictures. We're going to go over the TE in a minute. Next. Uh, this Dr. Sheeran put in my talk, uh, but it's a good meeting uh, in September next year in Columbus, Ohio. I think everybody should attend it. Next. And the intended procedure here is the ASD closure using a Figula device from Ocotec. So uh, let's pass to the echo pictures. I think Simone has some lovely pictures to show. So hello. Um, this is the four chamber view. As you can see, we have a large ASD, a secundo ASD here with um, RV and RA uh, overload. Um, here with the colorful flow mapping showing the left to right shunt. We measured here and it was 29 millimeters with deficient posterior uh, brim. And here in 60 degrees you can see how the posterior rim is small and the defect measures here about 26. This is the posterior inferior rim, which is thin and efficient. Here we got 28 millimeters. And let me show you the, another measurement, the bicable view here. Simone, those are lovely see. pictures. We'll uh, just uh, let you move on with the technical side of things. Uh, Z, what okay. size device we're going to use here? So this is a at least a 28 millimeter by here uh, measurement with deficient anterior rim. Uh, my first uh, guess would be at least a 36 millimeter uh, device. 36. Alison? I agree. 36. Anybody uh, going to go smaller? Zahid, I mean, is he in the auditorium? Zahid? Oh, I suspect if now. you balloon sized it, you could make it as large as you wanted. Okay. Okay, Carlos, do you want to carry on? Thank you, Simone. Those are yeah. beautiful, beautiful pictures. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. I think I, we, we need to ask another, know, another critical question prospectively, um, and maybe we can get an audience vote on who thinks the odds of successful closure are better than 80%? A few hands. What about less than 60%, several hands as well. So I think we all appreciate that this is not a for sure thing. Exactly. You can do it. Yeah, it's a very challenging, yeah, very challenging ASD with efficient anterior rim. The posterior rim is very floppy. It's not that big either. Uh, we discussed uh, uh, um, balloon sizing. I think it's useless in this case because we're going to go either to a 36 millimeter device. And uh, there were some frames that we uh, reached 30 
a 30 millimeter. So we decided to go for a 39 uh, millimeter device. Okay. And the reason uh, is uh, the Figula device, because it has more wires and the wires are thinner than uh, the Amplatzer device, I think my impression is that it's a little bit uh, more flexible and you can, uh, in the end, if we are successful, <coughs> it will hug the, the aura. So I have a 39 millimeter device here, so I'll show my hands. It's screwed onto the delivery cable already. Is that the, uh, biggest, this is a is that the biggest device, uh, the biggest um uh, the the biggest is 40, 40. Sorry? Uh, it's the biggest is 40, four 40, but we don't have that yeah, okay. in Brazil. So this is the largest that we have here that is available. And this is a 14 French sheet, okay, to load the device. So uh, we're going to use uh, some saline. What, what delivery sheet here. have you chosen? Uh, this is a 14 uh, cook sheet uh, with a, sort of a a 60 uh, degrees uh, curve. We don't have the Hausdorff sheet, which makes my life a little bit more difficult, but I think because of the curve and the flexibility of the device, I think we can play with that a little bit in order to, uh, to put in the right position. So, uh, this, Carlos, the device... For this big a defect, do you ever consider cutting a bevel on the end of the delivery sheath? Yeah. That, that's a, a good point, too. Uh, uh, I, I think Larry Latson uh, has done that and using a straight uh, sheet and then cutting in an oblique fashion, uh, beveling it. So, but we're going to give uh, a try with a, with a regular sheet. Carlos, here. I take it that device is the regular screw-on um, attachment. It's not the new ball grabbing one. No, exactly. Yeah. It, uh, the new version of that device has not been approved yet by our local health authorities. We are working on that at the moment. The new device has a, a pivoting uh, system uh, uh, between uh, the delivery cable, uh, which looks like a bioptome, and it grabs no, we uh, saw it. We saw it with a screw. Uh, Horse chode. Oh, okay. So horse oh, chode is his that, that ball grabbing good. technique. So, flash. Yeah. So I'm transferring here. What was the it's total a set length, tight. by the way? Who's speaking, Thomas? What was the total request, set length? A uh, request, Simone. Simone. Yes. Request was for the length, the total length of the septum, if there is such a thing. I didn't measure, but I can do it right now. Uh, we haven't measured uh, that, but I, I, you know, this is a big guy weighing uh, 83 kilos. Oh, by the way, I forgot to mention that his coronary arteries were totally normal. Uh, we took a picture of the coronary arteries beforehand, and I forgot to mention that. So I have my device near the tip. There are two ways to do that. Uh, I'm, I'm going to try to do the standard way first to open up the device in the left atrium and then rotate the sheath clockwise to see if the angle uh, towards the septum is appropriate. So let's see that. I'm in the uh, left upper pulmonary vein right now. So I'm going back. It fell off the pulmonary vein. So uh, I'm just open opening the left atrial disc, it's still, it's, it was, it got caught in the left atrial appendage. There you go. It, it, when it opened up, it was a little bit weird. Let, let's shift to the echo. I think we have a very nice angle here yep. to approach the septum. Can you make the echo bigger, please? echo bigger and fluoroscopy smaller. So I think we are reasonably fine. So uh, I'm going to uh, open up the waist in the middle, just pulling the sheath over the delivery cable. Just some adjustments here. I'm the angle looks very favorable there, uh, Carlos. Yeah, I agree. Just banging on the mitral valve a little uh, bit. Yeah. I think That's great. there. Yeah. 
There you go. I think very we grabbed nice. the, very the septum. Nicely done. Yeah, see how it's hugging, yeah, the, the aorta? And it looks like the profile is good, too. So let's check with the echo right now. Simone? Okay, oh, on zero degrees here, we see septum between the discs. And let's move. Here, um, bicaval view, as, uh, as we see, it's OK. Yeah. Here we see the, over here, we can see the inferior rim, Kevin, which is between the discs. Position? Yeah. Um, it, it looks very good, doesn't good. it? Oliver, happy with this position? Uh, yeah, it'd be interesting to see what it does when the cable's released, but it looks right. OK at the moment. Simona, you're happy with the mitral valve? Just show us a bit of color on the mitral valve, please. Yeah, yeah, let's go to the mitral, mitral valve here. Perfect. So, it's free. Perfect. No problem, yeah, perfect. perfect, yeah. That's a great job, Carlos. Yeah, so who agrees that we should release the, this device? Are, is everybody happy with the device every position? Every single body in the audience agrees that you should release <laughs> it. Okay. Neil, yes. so can I ask you a question? Have you ever seen in an adult patient where there's actually been a problem with the mitral valve with an ASD device? Yeah, good question. I don't remember, Oliver, do you? It's my adult colleague. Microphones are not fantastic this afternoon. Ah, there we go. Yeah, you remember we had a f I, the only 40 millimeter I device we've done. used, yeah. uh, not only closed the ASD, but also cured the mitral valve prolapse. Uh, but it's not, that's been fine since. That was about five years ago. There's your answer, Eric. And but obviously it's so much rarer than in children. J j and just to follow up, any pulmonary vein issue as well in an adult patient? We've never seen that. Anyone else have any experience with that? Yeah, anybody? Pulmonary vein um, anxieties with large devices in adults? Yeah, Pr uh, looks like not. Looks like not. Okay, Carlos? Yeah, we released the device, so we have the final pictures here.